This is not the game that NBC executives were hoping for on Thanksgiving, but the high total suggested there could be some action between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Indianapolis Colts on Thursday, November 24th in Week 12 NFL action. Both teams are sitting at 5-5 heading into Week 12, and neither team has a lead in its respective division. The Steelers are a two and a half point road favorite with the total approaching the mid 50s. The Pittsburgh Steelers have been a disappointment this season and especially lately. The Steelers opened up the season with a four and one record. Unfortunately, the Steelers then dropped four straight games. Now they have just the recent win over the Cleveland Browns. The Steelers are five and five straight up and against the number. So the spread has yet to matter in a Steelers game this season. After a cold and windy showing in Cleveland, the Steelers' offense has to be excited to play inside at Lucas Oil Stadium. Ben Roethlisberger is having a decent season, but the bar has been set so high throughout his career that his 64.6% completion percentage and 20 to 7 touchdown interception ratio almost feels pedestrian. Roethlisberger missed the loss to New England with a torn meniscus. Le'Veon Bell missed the first three games of the season due to injury but the Michigan State product has wrapped up 579 yards on 128 carries since and is already second on the team in both catches and targets. The fact remains that Antonio Brown still needs more help. He's hauled in 77 of his 115 targets for 907 yards and seven touchdowns. He has more than double the yards of Sammy Coates and all other pass catchers. Pittsburgh has had run blocking issues as they have averaged just 4.2 yards per carry, but only have two rushes of 20 plus yards. The Steelers defense is not great, but it's not bad either. They rank pretty much average across the board in several categories, although forcing some more turnovers would help the team quite a bit. The Steelers are tied with a glut of teams, allowing 5.8 yards per play, but they're down near the bottom of the league in takeaways with 12. The team seems to be missing Dick LeBeau, but not as much as they're missing big playmakers. The Steelers had 13 sacks in nine games before using the Browns offensive line like a collection of turnstiles to rack up eight sacks. The Indianapolis Colts are five and five straight up and five, four and one against the number. It seemed like Chuck Pagano's tenure as head coach would come to an end, but he has managed to get the biggest wins when he's really needed them. In the lackluster AFC South, the Colts are in second place, but they certainly need to start being more consistent. Back-to-back -back wins over the Green Bay Packers and Tennessee Titans might be a good start. The Colts are fortunate that they had their bye week prior to the win over Tennessee because it gave the team a chance to get healthy before this short week showdown with the Steelers. Andrew Luck started hot against Tennessee, but really cooled off as the game went along. He's only completed 63% of his passes this year with a 19 to eight touchdown interception ratio, but he's been sacked 35 times this season because his protection has been non-existent. Frank Gore is down under four yards per carry and Luck has more chunk plays in the running game. The Colts do average 12 yards per reception with Ty Hilton leading the way and some nice contributions lately from Dante Moncrief. This is a good collection of skilled players getting by in spite of a terrible offensive line. The Colts defense is bad, there's nothing more to say. They've allowed four and a half yards per carry on the season and opposing quarterbacks have completed 66% of their passes. Indianapolis has only forced eight turnovers and only three of those are interceptions. The 6.1 yards per play allowed by the Colts defense is second only to the Oakland Raiders and it's tied with the Cleveland Browns. If you're tied with the Browns in anything, that's a big problem. Opposing offenses have scored on 45.5% of their possessions against the Colts, which is second only to Green Bay, who has been decimated by injuries in the secondary. There is a reason that the total is climbing for this game. Pittsburgh has a poor pass rush and Indianapolis has a bad defense. Both of those things set two talented quarterbacks up for success. As far as a side play goes, the Steelers and Colts have both battled inconsistencies this season, but it would seem that the Colts would be the side catching points here at home with a little bit fresher team thanks to a more recent bye week. For our pick and prediction on this game and every other game this week, and a wealth of free stats and information, check out bangthebook.com.